Hey everyone, it's Amit. So lots of people maintain a certain amount of cash and they maintain this amount of cash for a variety of different reasons. It could be for an emergency fund or to pay off some type of a debt or they may want to buy a home or a car or sometimes something like that. They have a very defined purpose associated with it. And all they really want is a couple of things. They want liquidity, so they want to be able to extract that money at any point in time. And secondly, what they want is a certain amount of safety. So they don't want to put it into something such as the stock market because they have a defined purpose for it and they don't essentially want to lose any of that money in the short term. However, some of the challenges that they basically face is they put their money into some type of a bank account, okay? They may put it into a checking account or a savings account, potentially a certificate of deposit if they know sort of like what the timeline associated with it is going to be, maybe even a money market fund. And the biggest problem with all of those types of vehicles is that they have a very, very low interest rate. Now, what if I were to tell you that there's perhaps a better way to do this, okay? A better way where you can generate a significantly higher rate of return. Now, it does take you a little bit into the crypto realm, but with that said, it's fairly easy to execute and I'm going to walk you step by step in this video through one of those platforms such that you can potentially realize over a hundred percent rate of return on an annual basis associated with some of this money. Now there's basically a lots of different platforms that offer this particular service okay but the specific service that I'm going to be focused on is this website called KuCoin K-U-C-O-I-N and this particular site as far as I know as far as I've seen has got a significantly higher interest rates than any of the other websites that I've visited and I've basically been doing a lot of research in terms of what it is that these platforms are doing? How is it that they're offering these significantly high interest rates? What do they essentially do with it? But basically what I've learned is a couple of things, right? So one is that these websites essentially allow you to lend out money. So you're taking your money and you're basically lending it out to others. And the others that are essentially borrowing this money are effectively borrowing this money to trade on margin. The other thing that I was sort of concerned about was, well, how safe is this? And all the research that I've basically done is it seems like it can be relatively safe. And from my own personal experience, just navigating through these sites and putting some money in there and essentially lending it out, I've not come across any significant challenges associated with it. And as I said, there's lots of platforms that offer this, like Coinbase, you know, there's a Gemini, there's lots of different platforms that basically offers this, but KuCoin by far has got the highest rate of return. So if you're getting value from this video, definitely hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It's useful to hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm as it gets the video out to other people as well. In order to get started into this particular platform, what you do need to do is a couple of things, okay? You do need to create a login. I'm not gonna basically go into that particular screen as you walk through this video. And that's largely because you just put in a username and a password, right? Which can be very personal in nature. So this, this video will basically take you after you have essentially done that initial login. So let's get into it. So this is the KuCoin website, okay? And what I'm basically going to be doing is I am going to click on crypto lending under the earnings tab. And this is how you basically lend out money. You'll see these are all USDT, okay? USDT is the currency that we're essentially going to lend out. You may have a question in terms of what is USDT. USDT, another way of saying it is basically, it's, it's, it's called Tether, okay? And when I say Tether, it's basically tethered to the US dollar, okay? It's a stable coin that is aligned with the US dollar. So essentially, one US dollar more or less equals one USDT. So what you will effectively have to do is you will need to buy USDT in order to lend USDT out to others because these other people who are trading on margin are essentially borrowing USDT because they're all in the crypto sphere and they need that USDT to effectively transact their transactions. But don't panic quite yet, right? I'm gonna walk you through exactly how that is done. So let's keep going here, right? So this is the USDT. You'll see the daily rates of return, daily interest rates, and then you'll see on Bitcoin, slightly lower interest rates than the USDT. And of course, here's Ethereum, slightly lower interest rates than that even. Going back to USDT, you'll see these daily interest rates are basically 2.25%, which averages out to over 100% rate of return on an annual basis. Now let's pause here, okay? Because at this point in time, you're seeing that I'm about to buy some of these cryptos. I'm gonna actually go ahead and buy USDT, okay? And you'll see there are lots of options here. There's a credit debit card, there's P2P, there's fast buy, there's lots of different options in terms of how you can actually go about executing this purchase. What I'm gonna do in this video, I'm just gonna show you how to do this thing using credit card, using the credit card approach. Now the credit card approach is also a very expensive approach because you do have to pay a significant amount of transaction fees. Typically speaking, right, you would essentially get money or you would get some of this USDT from a different exchange where you already own that currency and transfer it into KuCoin. And that is by far the cheaper way to essentially do that. But, you know, I'm trying to do this video more for the rookie type of individual, right? So even though you do have to pay a transactional fee associated with this particular thing in terms of buying these USDTs on your credit card, 
the, the notion that you have to get past is that you'll be able to realize a significantly higher rate of return on this thing, which should hopefully offset any of those transactional fees that you basically have to pay. So let's keep rolling here. Okay, so in this particular transaction, I'm gonna say that I'm gonna basically uh, buy $500 worth of USDT, okay? So I'm gonna change this BTC default to USDT. Just gonna scroll down here, find it. There it is, USDT selected. I'm gonna use my Visa MasterCard to execute this transaction. So let's keep going. I hit confirm, it takes me basically to the next page. You're gonna be utilizing this platform called Banksa, okay? Banksa, you can do some research on it, but it's perfectly legitimate. And it's essentially utilized to basically do this transactional exchange that we're referring to. Now I'm gonna skip past here, okay? But you do have to enter some level of personal information here, right? Your first name, last name, potentially some security information, such as your driver's license number and all of that good stuff, potentially your passport. So I'm gonna skip through all of this because obviously this is personally identifiable information. So one quick thing that I will point out is I used my driver's license for this particular thing and they did ask me to basically show a, a picture of the front and the back of my driver's license as well as me to essentially hold my driver's license. And this is all a part of the KYC process, okay? They gave KYC is a know your customer type of process, and it's very important for all of these exchanges to essentially know who it is that they're basically transacting with in order to be compliant with various rules and regulations. Okay, so then once you're done with all of that, you do have to enter your credit card number. Again, I'm going to skip through this so that you guys don't actually see my personally identifiable information, but pretty straightforward stuff. Put in your credit card information, put in, uh, you know, the expiration date, the security code, all that sort of thing, and that will basically is going to be what actually enables this particular transaction. So now one thing I'll quickly point out, okay? So when you're actually executing that purchase, it could take a 24 hour to 48 hour period for the transaction to actually get through and for the money to actually sit in your KuCoin account, okay? But let's keep rolling here, okay? So now you've got the transaction, you've got the money basically in your account. Now you're gonna go about actually lending this money out. So that's what we're gonna talk about in this portion of the video. So you'll see here, I do have my USDT, right? I have that $471.39 that we talked about before, right? And then I'm going to go to crypto lending. And what you can do on this particular page, right? You go to USDT, and then what you can do is you can basically say that I wanna keep a certain amount of money in, uh, like that I'm not gonna lend, right? I'm just gonna keep this in my account just in case I wanna do a different type of lending at a future date. What I'm also doing is I'm selecting this auto lend button. And the reason why I'm putting this auto lend button on is primarily such that once my lending is done, so I'm basically lending my money out for like seven day or 14 day or 28 day duration, the system will automatically re-lend that money so that I don't have to keep going into this thing and going through this whole process over and over again, okay? The one the other thing that I'll quickly point out is as you're lending this money, it's, preferably to, it's preferable to use the auto lend feature, okay? And the reason why I say that is just as how you can send this money out or you're lending this money out, the borrower of this money can pay the money out back earlier as well, right? So they don't necessarily have to wait for the seven days or the 14 days or 28 days or whatever. So they may pay the money back earlier too, and you will get notified for all of this stuff. But with that said, if somebody pays it off in two days or three days or whatever, then you have to go back into the tool and you have to lend the money out again. So enabling that auto lend feature is quite favorable in that regard. So here's what I'm gonna basically do, okay? So I'm gonna set a certain amount of reserve money, a certain amount of money that I essentially don't wanna lend, okay? So I'm gonna keep $100 with me, and I'm gonna basically lend out the remainder of this USDT that I effectively have. So here we go. So I'm reserving 100. The terms, I'm gonna be lending this money out for seven days. And you'll see these interest rates, right? So you're seeing these interest rates, 0.25% for seven days on the right-hand side of the screen, right? Some of them are 28 days, you can get 0.25%. And you can see the annualized rates associated with that, right? Which is around 91%, 92%. And this is significantly higher than what you're getting get at a lot of your bank accounts. But let's keep going here. I just wanna see the seven day rates. I don't need to see the 28 day rates, the 14 day rates, because I plan on just lending this money out for a seven day duration. I'm gonna click on seven day. It's gonna sort it to just seven days. And this is what you can see, the annualized rate of returns of 90.88 all the way to 104.02. And you can see daily interest rates as well. And the lowest interest rate that I basically saw there was around 0.25% uh, or so. Now you can uh, lend out this money at any of these rates if you, as you desire. Now what I've typically done here is I've lended my money out at slightly lower than the interest rates that's basically being recommended here of 0.25%. So a question that is usually asked is, well, why are you lending your money out at a lower rate than what you can potentially get in the market? Well, the main reason is this, right? So I'm generating a very high uh, annual yield on this particular money, right? So I don't need to be overtly greedy, just be a little bit greedy, right? Uh, but I also want my money to work 
work, right? I want it to get lended out. I want a borrower to look at it and say, oh, this is the lowest rate. Let me go ahead and utilize this guy's money as opposed to any of the other options that they have. So in order to keep myself competitive, right, is why I'm essentially keeping my rate slightly lower than what I can potentially get on this particular platform. Anyway, let's keep going. I've also enabled auto lend as we talked about before, right? I'm reserving 100, and my minimum daily interest rate is 0.25 and for seven day duration. Okay, and this is it. So basically it's successful, right? And I have essentially lent that money out. Now, when you go to my lendings, it doesn't instantaneously say that, oh, your money is gone, right? Or it's essentially being loaned out. It's not gonna say that right off the bat here, okay? Okay, and this is the confirmation, 0.25, seven days, 100, right? And this is my open order. So I'm essentially waiting on somebody to grab this money, right? And essentially uh, borrow it from me. Okay, so just now you can see the unsettled transactional amount is seven days. This has been lended, okay? And the money is out. You're obviously not gonna see anything in open orders anymore. That's really it, okay? So that's how you utilize the KuCoin platform. That's how you basically would uh, put money into the platform. That's how you lend the money out of the platform. I'll do a video some other time and some of the other mechanics in terms of how do you transfer money uh, you know from different potentially a different uh, crypto site into KuCoin but at least for now I just wanted to show the easiest way to do this which is just basically going through a credit card type of transaction even though it is by far the most uh, expensive out of the various options that you can potentially use but it is more than enough to get you started and as I said the realized rate of return of this thing is so much higher than everything else uh, that you know it can easily offset some of those transactional costs that you basically have on the front end. The title of this video I basically did say that hey this is the bank killer okay and the reason why I call this particular video bank killer is it's gonna be fewer and fewer people who are basically putting their money into some of these CDs or um, you know checking accounts saving accounts if they can realize a significantly higher return rate of return fairly easily on one of these crypto type of exchanges now there is a small risk associated with this okay these are not FDIC insured typical bank accounts are FDIC insured up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars these are not okay so I wouldn't take all your money and dump it in here or something like that okay that may be a very risky type of proposition outside of this obviously you know one could argue that the rate of return that you're getting from some of these sites is even higher than what you would get on the stock market so I even invest in the stock market but with that said right like um, you know I wouldn't put all my eggs into one black basket uh, when it comes to your money for for any reason for that matter so anyway I hope you enjoyed the contents of this video if you did definitely hit the like button subscribe to the channel ring the notification bell and I'll see you soon